Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan James, and I am a mindset coach that loves to specifically focus on relationships. Before we get into today's video, remember that life is not happening to you, but happening through you. When you become the change you seek to experience, you're going to experience that change everywhere you go, and you are showing the world how to treat you based on what you believe and feel about yourself, what you generally believe and feel about different aspects of your life, and how that's causing you to show up, perceive, respond, and mentally persist with those things. And if you want to change those areas of your life, it would be very wise to look at what you believe about yourself or that area of your life, adjust those beliefs, step in with some nervous system regulation, some patience, some love, some self-support, right? And know that as you adopt these changes and as you show up in a new way, you're going to be able to respond differently, mentally persist in a different way and create new sustainable results in your life. Okay, so I've put out a bunch of new nightly recordings, as you guys can see, um, I have more coming and I just want to go over that really quickly because I know there are a lot of <clears throat> new people on my channel. So the nightly recordings are one aspect. Okay. Um, and if you notice, every nightly recording that I make is very general in the sense that it's beliefs that you either hold about yourself or beliefs that you hold about different areas of your life. Okay, the whole premise here is you need to be the change. It's not about changing anybody outside of you, but revaluing yourself, adopting a new identity that is going to allow for you to no longer react the same way, no longer perceive in the same manner, be able to show up in a brand new way, operate in a new way, hold new thoughts, new awarenesses, and create new results. Okay. So it's not about changing anybody around you. It's about becoming the change. And if you actually adopt new beliefs and a new way of valuing yourself, you're going to find that holding desired outcomes in your mind becomes a lot easier because you're actually in an identity that supports those outcomes. Okay. But the nighttime recording is just one aspect. Okay. To me, that is one of the quickest ways to shift your beliefs. You don't have to use the ones that are on my channel. Okay. Obviously I put a lot on my channel. You can use them if you want to. You can look at them as inspiration, create your own. I don't really care. I'm going to continue to make them. Okay. Um, but with the nighttime recordings, okay, if you find one that is very attuned to the changes you want to create within yourself, okay, which is why I put the list of affirmations that go into each recording in the comment section pinned, okay, you want to use that at nighttime, but also realize that during the day, if you are mentally struggling, if you're triggered a lot, if you're having tons of intrusive thoughts, you need to do things for your nervous system. Okay. Um, and that can either be a breath work, EFT tapping, yoga, exercise. You can go to a professional to help you with this. Okay. You can go to some sort of therapy. So regardless, you need to do something during the day to stabilize in your nervous system, okay? And I also find that short little intentional meditations to address what you're dominantly struggling with during the day is also very useful, okay? Meaning I'm gonna look at my intrusive thoughts, I'm gonna look at my compulsive behaviors, and I'm gonna figure out what is it that I am struggling with when I'm awake that I need to bring some conscious awareness to, to meditate on and to address so that I can no longer struggle with these intrusive thoughts, and I can also begin to shift out of compulsively acting in this way, okay? Um, so if you can make a habit of doing those things when you're awake, and all this really looks like is maybe, you know, breath work in the morning, breath work at nighttime, maybe some sort of exercise during the day, or another round of breath work, that there is maybe anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes a day for just nervous system regulation, maybe a little bit longer if you exercise, okay? The short little meditations, five to 10 minutes, maybe two to three times a day. That's another anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. So maximum when you're awake, all you should really be doing when it comes to mindset work is maybe 45 minutes to an hour of your day spread out, okay? And then obviously too, like I've said in content, give yourself a break. Okay, so if you're starting to feel really overwhelmed, if it doesn't really feel that good, if you're if you're finding yourself a little bit frozen or stuck in your reality, or you don't have the motivation to do these things, you're getting annoyed with a nighttime recording, give yourself a break, okay, give yourself a day or two to kind of take a step back, relax, okay, and then when you start to feel better, step back into it. 
the whole thing that you're persisting in is being the change, right? And so you want to make sure that with whatever you're doing, you're able to adopt a routine that feels good to you, okay? That that actually addresses what you're struggling with, that allows for you to change and to no longer identify with the previous set of circumstances or problems that you had in your life. And when you actually shift, when you grow as an individual, when you change in your identity, you're going to find that it's very easy to let go of things that previously bothered you because you no longer identify with them like anything in life. Okay. So the things that you are worried about years and years and years ago that no longer apply to you and where you are in your life, you're not thinking about them or worried about them all day long because you have shifted in your identity. Now you may have done that experientially through your life process. Okay. But when we want to do it consciously, we want to look at what we believe, how we're organizing ourselves, stepping with nervous system regulation, adopting new beliefs, and knowing that as we persist in adopting this new way of identifying, that's going to naturally occur. That's really important, okay? If you want to change a particular relationship with somebody and you're struggling with kind of seeing them in a new light, right? So it's very difficult to let go of the past or see somebody in a new light or create a new dynamic when you're still identified with the previous set of circumstances because you at a core foundational level haven't changed, right? You're still holding on to it because it's still relevant to who you are today, okay? Um, so everything that I was saying there was the nighttime recordings are one aspect of it, okay? You also wanna make sure during the day you're setting yourself up for success by creating an internal environment that fosters those changes as well too. And it shouldn't be an all day affair and you can definitely take breaks if you're feeling overwhelmed, okay? Uh, today, I wanna talk about, like I have been talking about knowing your worth and your value, okay? I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going on this point, okay? And I'm not gonna let up on it, okay? So I know in my last video, I was talking about like, don't put somebody on a pedestal the size of Mount Everest, okay? And when it comes to your worth and your value, okay? I'm gonna reiterate this point here, okay? Some of you, and this is not a message for everybody, okay? I, again, there's a lot of people on my channel, but some of you are in such terrible situations or circumstances, and you're attracted to people that are so below what you actually deserve that you really need to look at how you're valuing yourself and ask yourself why you are attracted to this person. Okay. Can you manifest? Can you materialize? Can you consciously create your life? Yes. And it's actually necessary. Okay. We should not be going around our reality, just hoping things work out for us and bringing no consciousness and no deliberation into it. You don't do that in any aspect of your life. You don't do that with work, hopefully. Okay. You don't do that with your health, hopefully, right? You don't do that with your friend group, hopefully, right? You don't just go, oh, I hope things work out for me. I don't think I can consciously create my life. I can't decide what I want. I can't decide my career. I can't decide the amount of money I want to make. I can't decide the type of friend groups I'm going to have. No, you definitely 100% should be bringing consciousness into what you're creating with your life. And that also comes down to a relationship. Can you materialize a specific relationship? Yes, you can. Okay. Now, the thing is, some of you are taking these teachings and you're applying it to somebody that is so below what you were, what you are worth. Okay. Can people grow and change? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to argue with some of you. Okay. Because I know there are some people that are going to say, no, they can't. Okay. People can change. Okay. If people can't change then then how are you capable of changing? Okay, that idea and that belief doesn't make any sense. Okay. And honestly, it's the same thing when I when I hear people say people can't change. Okay. It's the same thing as somebody going to a psychic telling them what their future is going to be like. Okay. It is the same premise and way of operating. You don't know. How, how do you know that? Are you, do you know what's going to happen tomorrow? Do you know what's going to happen a month from now? Do you know what's going to happen a year from now? No, you don't. So why are you predicting the future? Why, why are you telling people that people can't change and they can't get what they want? It doesn't make any sense. What makes you qualified to have that assumption? Okay. However, okay. I will say this. Okay. Some of the things, so you guys are taking that teaching and, and getting conscious and deliberate with your life. Love it. Okay. However, some of you are dealing with shit that is so fucking below you. And I'm going to be very honest with it. Okay. 
And some of you are attracted to those types of people because of how you are valuing yourself and you believe that you have to go through particular things in order to get what you want. Okay. So when you are changing in your identity and what you believe about yourself, I'm going to advocate for you to be very picky. Okay. To, to raise your standards, to believe that you are worthy of the best, that you don't have to ask for what you want, that you don't have to chase love, that you don't have to ask somebody to show up for you properly. I'm all for healthy communication. Okay. But at the same token, you shouldn't have to ask for somebody to love you, to communicate with you, to honor you, to show you acts of love or kindness, okay? And so this goes into the premise of waiting and really understanding what being the change is and how to embody this and what living in the end is, okay? Living in the end is taking on an identity and a way of operating that is going to naturally create those results, which is also going to allow for you to naturally entertain them in your mind. Because if I identify in a particular way and I value myself in a particular way, it's going to be a natural assumption that I can create this desired result that I can entertain without becoming obsessed or waiting for that result because I'm embodying a version of myself that would naturally create that result and isn't attached to getting it in one particular way. I can know I'm going to get it in a particular way, but I'm not waiting for it because I'm more busy embodying and being. So let's talk about your worth and your value and when you find yourself waiting, okay? We'll come back to the people that are attracted to people that need you need to revalue yourself in a second, okay? I'm going to put that as a sticky note over here. When it comes to waiting, Okay, there's, and I've said this on my channel before, there's nothing to wait for. There's nothing to wait for. Okay, especially when you value yourself properly. So if somebody is not, and, and this is where you have to really look at how you're operating during the day and be extremely honest with yourself. Okay, if somebody is not giving you what you deserve, okay, and there's you have done nothing right to 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 uh signal that type of behavior right meaning everything's going really well there's no reason why this person shouldn't be communicating with you there hasn't been any problems there's no arguments there's nothing like everything's going well okay and they're just not showing up and treating you properly okay somebody that really knows their worth and their value and knows that they are deserving of that treatment okay, is not going to wait for this person to give it to them. They're going to show up for themselves in that way and be open to any experience that shows up treating them and giving them that treatment, okay? Because how they are identified, I am somebody that gets loving treatment. I am somebody that is always valued. I am somebody that gets the commitment. I'm somebody that, that sees their worth. I'm somebody that remains self-recognized and self-identified. I'm somebody that can create solutions, right? The act of waiting for somebody to give you what you want is in contradiction with that identity, okay? And so when you find yourself waiting, I want you to really ask yourself, what are you waiting for? Because the only person that's making you wait is you. You're choosing to sit there and think about it every day. You're choosing to focus on this person. You're choosing to try to change them, okay? You're, you're so focused on them that you're not even like, then you're coming and watching a video like this that is like telling you objectively, okay? And upfront that you have to be the change, okay? So in those moments, when you're focusing so much on them, Okay, you're actually in an identity that is, I have to wait to get what I want. I'm not good enough inherently as I am to get the treatment I deserve. Okay, that doesn't mean that you need to be petty, argumentative, messy with this person. It's just a change in how you're operating yourself. Okay, you're not giving me what I deserve. I can do anything I want and I'm not waiting for it. I'm not waiting for your messages. I'm not waiting for your acknowledgement. I'm not waiting for you to treat me the way that I deserve to be treated. I'm going to step up to the plate for myself and I'm going to embrace people, places, and things that show up for me in the way that I deserve because that is how I am identified. 
Okay, so I just want to make that really clear. There's nothing to wait for. Okay, living in the end is taking on an identity and knowing something into being. So instead of continually reacting to somebody that is showing up in a way that you don't even want, realize that it is below you to do that. Okay. Another thing that actually, and then we're going to come back to the like valuing your thing, valuing yourself thing. Okay. I constantly talk about, you know, you don't need to chase anybody. Okay. What good. And I know there are men on my channel. Okay. But I'm going to speak to the ladies right now. Okay. Hi girlies. Okay. What met, what, what good has ever come from chasing a man? What good has ever come from over prioritizing a man? What good has ever come from over, uh, you know, undervaluing yourself and catering to the needs of a man over yourself? I'm going to give you the answer. Nothing. Okay. Nothing good comes from that. So when we are, when I'm talking about, there's, there's nothing to chase after. Again, I am not talking about being petty or argumentative. Okay. You can respond to something. Okay. And clarify yourself without chasing. My opinion, though, is that you don't need to ask for those things. So if somebody is not showing up the way that you deserve, then remove yourself, prioritize yourself, reinforce your beliefs, and embrace experiences that do show up for you properly. And if you want to be with this person, know that they're going to get the hint and step up to the plate without you asking for it. Okay. However, if you want to respond to the situation, okay, how you choose to respond to it is important in my opinion, okay? Hey, I don't really like that you're doing that. I know I deserve better. I'm not going to wait for it. I'm not going to chase you. I'm not going to force this on you, okay? But I really know what I'm worth and what I deserve. So I hope you have a good day, right? If you want to do that, do that, okay? If you want to communicate your needs, okay, do that. But the key is you don't have to chase somebody for that. Okay, so if you choose to respond to something, just make sure you're doing it. And my, again, my opinion, okay, this is my opinion. Make sure you're doing it from a stance that you're not chasing or trying, force, trying to force this on a person. Because when we go in the route or we go in the direction of chasing and trying to force something on somebody, it really does translate in a way that I don't believe I deserve that inherently. Because why am I gonna chase you or ask for something that I know I deserve? And I need to know that I deserve that I need to come into full recognition of myself, my worth, my value, what I get in relationships, who I am in this world. I need to come into that self-recognition first before somebody can consistently give it to me. So it's just about really understanding and having the self-awareness behind what you're doing and why you're doing it, okay? Now, back to the thing that I sticky noted, okay? Some of you really, 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 really need to look at why you are attracted to the people you are attracted to, okay? Again, it is not my business to tell you what to do with your life. Nobody can tell you what to do with your life. And it doesn't really matter because it, it doesn't matter what anybody says. You're still going to do what you want to do, okay? And especially from a belief standpoint, okay? There are certain reasons why you are attracted to particular things and drawn to particular things. Okay. Now, again, can people change? Yes. But, okay, I think it's also very wise to ask yourself what you're willing to persist through. Okay. And that really relates to your worth and your value. So do you want to take somebody that has no life goals, no aspirations, no drive, can't even take care of themselves. Okay. Can't even hold a job. Okay. And create a relationship with them? Is that the wisest thing to do? Is that how you value yourself? Do you view yourself as somebody that has to fix other people and build them up? Okay. Or do you just need to revalue yourself and realize that your standards were very low, how you valued yourself was very low. And now it's time to revisit those things and raise those standards so that who you are attracted to and what you create isn't as big of a headache. Okay. Can you do what I just talked about? Yes. And here's the thing. Even if somebody is like that, if they listen to what I'm saying, no drive, no desire to better themselves. Okay. If they have those things, if somebody's in a low place, but they are working to better themselves, I find, I think that's very attractive. Okay. Again, it comes down to what you're willing to persist through. Okay. But I want you guys to use discernment. So when we're creating a relationship with somebody, there are a lot of elements that go into that. 
right? It's not just, oh, you're so cute, baby. I love you. <laughs> okay. You have financial, okay, obligations tied together, okay, family, friends, okay, you're going to share personal spaces with this person. So you're going to build a life with them, right? And so is the person you are attracted to actually somebody that you can build a life with? Do they actually have those qualities? And do you want to take it on as a responsibility to build them into that person? Is that your responsibility? Okay. And so with how you value yourself again, okay. And some of you may not like hearing this, but I'm just going to say it. I don't really care if you don't like it. This is my channel and I'm, and I'm here to be a coach. I'm not here to be a friend. I'm not here to be your favorite. I'm here to tell the truth and to give you the tools to adjust yourself so that you can create what you actually desire. Okay. And a part of that means making smart decisions. Okay. Making smart, educated decisions and really coming into full clarity about the choices that you're making. It's very difficult to be attracted to people that are high value when you value yourself very lowly, right? And the flip side, you're not going to be attracted to low quality individuals when you value yourself very highly. So I'm putting this here, okay? And before you drive yourself crazy over a person that can't even take care of themselves, okay? That you really need to look at what you're attracted to and why. Because it's no joke. Relationships are no joke. You're entangling your life with a person. Do you want to entangle your life with a person, okay, that you feel that you need to ask for them to love you properly, that you feel that you need to chase them for that, that love, okay? And I also understand, okay, that if you have limiting beliefs and negative assumptions, you're going to create a very undesirable dynamic with somebody. Okay, take ownership and accountability. If that person was amazing and wanted to commit to you and was being great and you had a whole bunch of negative assumptions and insecurities and you want to fix this situation, fine. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? I'm talking about the people that are attracted to individuals that are cheating on them, lying to them, running game on them, okay? Doesn't even do anything nice to them, okay? Text them at 10 p.m., puts no effort towards them, leaves them in the dark, okay? Those people, I want you to look at why you are attracted to that. Outside of just whatever, maybe they look cute. I don't know, okay? Why are you attracted to that? And what does that say about how you value yourself? Because it's no joke. You deserve better than that. Okay, but you have to believe and know that about yourself first. And if you really believed and knew that about yourself, you would not find any of that attractive. Okay, last thing. Uh, somebody asked me, where do you find high value men? Okay, or high value women? Again, okay, uh, especially for high value men, okay, living in the end, you're going to know it. So it's not about finding, okay? If you identify as a high value individual, you're going to know that other people are going to recognize that you're high value and they're going to take initiative to be with you, okay? For the men, that, that may materialize as when you see a high value woman, you're going to be confident enough to approach them, okay, in a very respectful manner that is attractive. As a woman, that means you're going to be very confident in knowing that a high value man is going to attract you in a very respectful manner. You're not going to be searching for it because somebody that identifies as high value, that has really solid beliefs about themselves and values themselves properly and knows their worth and their value isn't going to be looking for anything. They're busy embodying and being the best version of themselves and filling their day with activities that are fulfilling that add to their value. They're not looking for anything. There's nothing within them that is lacking. And that is why they show up in a way that presents as high value. And other people are going to see that, recognize it, and be attracted to it, okay? So it's not about going out and finding anything. Again, being the change, okay? So if you want to create a specific outcome, do you identify as an individual that can normalize that experience? And if that experience was truly normalized for you, would you be trying to make it happen? Okay, that's why belief work is really important. How you identify is really important, okay? And again, to the beginning of this video, 
the nightly recordings are just one portion, okay? In my opinion, they help a lot, okay? But if you're struggling during the day, you need to do things for your nervous system and you need to do those short little meditations that are addressing what you're struggling with. And no, you shouldn't be affirming for specific outcomes, okay? You should be addressing self-concept beliefs, either about yourself or this area of your life. Because by the time you want something specific, you should be in an identity and a version of yourself where that outcome is normalized and you can know that that's gonna be your experience and you're not waiting for it, okay? Can you entertain it if you want? Sure, but it's not gonna be something that's obsessive and compulsive. You're just gonna know that you're gonna have this thing and you allow for it to unfold and you place your focus each day on progressively getting better and embodying and growing and enjoying your life, knowing that these things are going to come to you, okay? All right, I think that's all I wanted to talk about today. Um, yeah, cool, love you, bye.